I am joined by my guest who is a financial coach in the person of Jennifer Richa. Thank you for joining us on Business Daily. Uh, can you hear me, Jennifer Richa? Uh, we seem to... Okay, okay, she, she can hear me. Thank you again for joining us on Business uh, Daily. Uh, starting off in the spirit of, you know, warming up towards celebrating our children on the 27th of May. I would like for you to, you know, start off this conversation by telling us why exactly it is important to, you know, teach children about financial literacy from a young age. And at what age should parents start, you know, introducing these financial concepts to their children? Okay, thank you so much, Shamaka, for having me. Okay, let's start with why. Why is it important for children to be taught financial literacy? Can you hear me? Yes, I Why can. is it important for children to be taught financial literacy? One of the major reasons is it helps them in building a strong financial foundation. Most of the habits we learn to into adulthood, I beg your pardon, like not to talk to strangers, not to stay out late, and all these things. So when we when we teach our children financial literacy early enough, it helps them build, it helps them build these blocks, and they can navigate their way through the complexities of financial um, crisis, economic growth, and all that. So number one, it will help them build a strong financial foundation. Number two, it shows them or it exposes them to um, the consequences of debt. Most of us grew up watching our parents do things. There are things we heard as children, there are things we saw, there are things we experienced. I was in a store um, a few weeks ago and I saw a mother spending her salary in the presence of her child. And you know, some parents will ask you, okay, this is 10,000 naira. go give it to this person that we are owing. We, we bought rice from that store, we bought this from this store. But when these children are taught the consequences that when you are in debt as a child, you are unable to build wealth and you're going to suffer. So there are little ways you can inculcate this habit into your children because this is the forming part of their lives. This is a forming, this is a foundation. Once these habits are formed at this stage, it will help them navigate their way through adulthood. Well, it's quite unfortunate issues, that all through uh, our years in school, like 20 years, 50 years, pardon, I can't hear you. No, I'm asking, at what age do you advise parents start introducing, you know, concepts around money and finances to their children? Okay, um, I think from age one, once the child understands how to speak, he understands everything you're saying, there are ways to bring it at their level. There are ways to bring this thing down to their level. Just like when, as children, they'll give you Christmas money. This is your Christmas money, your Christmas gift. And you're teaching this child, okay, you're giving a thousand naira. This is a piggy bank. You, have, you can put 10% of what you are giving at that age. So this child grows up with that habit. Okay, when I'm giving 10,000 naira, I can save 1,000 naira. So you help the child. But before then, the child has to understand the different denominations we have, the value of them, and how to count money. It will, it will be easier for them to save a percentage. It will be easier for them to delay gratification. So I think from age one, it's okay because some children can start talking age one. Oh, we seem to have lost our guest there. But let's go on a short break. When we return, the conversation continues to stay.
we, we okay. came to. Okay, yeah, good. Can you hear me, uh, Jennifer? Yes, Nelly. Please go ahead. Okay. Uh, I had asked you uh, what, you know, let's start with the foundation, the fundamental basic concepts that, you know, children should learn. Uh, what are the fundamental financial concepts that you would advise, you know, parents put out and ensure that your children learned and learned early enough? Okay, basic concepts. Number one, you know, building the saving culture in the child learn how to save from a very tender age. And I said, when you ask the question of the age, from age one, from age one to, depending on the development of the child, there are children that are smart as you can think of from age one. So you can teach this child how to start saving early enough, like getting a piggy bank. And it's also good for you to make it as practical as possible. So you can get a piggy bank and teach the child how to, you know, differentiate between the saving money, the saving part, the money you should spend, and the money you should invest. So these are basic concepts you can train, you can put or inculcate in your child early enough. Mm. So getting a piggy bank to encourage this child, you are saving, and there should be a reason. You know, children want to ask you why. Why am I doing this? So tell them that whenever you are saving this amount of money, you are planning for your future. Do you want to be poor? Definitely the child is going to say no. So if you don't want to be poor, it is, it is good you save a a certain percentage for your future. I think this will help build something in the that will grow up with them. Thank you. Yeah, you have talked about, you know, a practical way, you know, telling the child that this is a piggy, uh, piggy bank, put your monies inside, differentiating between your needs and your want. But let's talk about, you know, the concept of budgeting, which can be difficult even for adults. And then when you think about how you can translate you know, that concept to children, it becomes a lot more uh, complex. But let's hear from you. How can parents teach their children about budgeting, you know, uh, putting money aside for certain purposes? OK, um, I think for that to be very effective, it has to start from the parents. There has to be a foundation. They have to see how you budget in the house. And you know, children are very sensitive. They want, like I said earlier, they want to know why. So when a child is given a certain amount of money, I saw a video of an American trying to explain money concepts to his child. And this is what this was what he did. He gave the child a hundred dollar bill and he said talking about what they spend money on monthly. Like um money rent for groceries and that was how he was able to break down this concept to a five-year-old i can't remember his age right now but i think it should not be more than seven five to seven so when a child is given an amount of money he's um expected to break it down according to his needs first it should be broken down according to his needs okay what do you need this month oh i want toys okay what do you need these are simple ways you can break it down so now budgeting is very very, very difficult for some persons even as adults it's very difficult. But when you're already modeling that behavior, it becomes very easy because the child is seeing what you're doing. You know, they learn faster from your action. So now what you're doing is now less for you to um, simplify it to what the child can understand, can understand, beg your pardon. So now you can tell the child, what do you want to, what do you want to have this month? This is what you should do. This is what you shouldn't do. This is what you should do. So the money is being allocated um, to specific accounts. Like I usually tell my I usually tell my students to have five different accounts which they're saving money. One, you're saving money for your future, your financial freedom. Two, you're saving money for your personal dreams. What are the things like you like to have as a child? Three, you're saving money for emergencies, for welfare, because you're supposed to teach your child how to give. Aside saving, the child should know how to give. Okay, I've been given ten thousand naira as a child. One thousand naira should go for giving. I'm giving to the poor, I'm giving to the needy. It will help them when they grow up. Because we live in a world of duality, saving, spending, up, down, good, bad. So once um, you want them to learn this concept, it should be bad. Teaching them the savings concept, teaching them the budgeting, teaching them how to invest, all these things comes gradually. Like budgeting, you have to do that at their level. What, in, what are the interests of this child? What does he want to have? Okay, you can't have all these things. We have to budget it. Okay, this one comes first. This one comes second. This one comes third. And you can also use your family finances to teach this child. This is 100,000 naira. This is what the family ends, and this is how we break it down. 
So the child knows that at the end of the month, my mom keeps this money aside for, for rent. She keeps this money aside for my school fees. She keeps this money aside for food. I think that will help a long way in building the child on learning how to budget. Uh, what are your thoughts on, you know, giving children allowances, say weekly or monthly or whatever, you know, timeline now that is your preference? But what are your thoughts on giving children allowances? Okay, giving children allowance is not a bad thing. The when I was growing up as a child, most children I saw that were given allowances didn't use it well. Probably because they weren't taught why they should be given or how they should manage how much they, be, they are being given. All right, so the allowances for those that, that are comfortable, for those that are blessed to have parents that are well to do to give them allowances, that's that's a beautiful thing. But before giving a child an allowance, the child should know what this money is meant to be used for. I know of a particular student that was given, I think that's thousand naira as of 2012 or 20, yes, 2012, 2011. But she ended up wasting every penny that comes in. Why? Daddy is going to give me more. Daddy has more than enough. So in as much as you want to give your child allowances, they should know why. So I think um, educating them first before giving them allowances will help them. Because I know so many children that were given allowances even back in secondary school, back in boarding school days. And today, they, they don't know what to do. Some of them are finding it difficult to get jobs. Some of them are finding it difficult to manage even what they are getting. Because I don't think unemployment is the only issue in Nigeria. We have so many uh, employed youth that are finding it difficult to manage their finances, finding it very difficult to manage their salaries. And this was because they missed it out. They missed out on what they would have learned from their allowances. So it's a good thing to give your children allowances, but they should know why they are being given. They should know how to allocate the resources being given to them. If not, it's as well as not giving the child anything, or there's no difference between the child that's receiving allowance and a child that's from a poor background that doesn't have anybody to give him an allowance. So we emphasizing the, the point you had raised earlier on, you know, educating the child uh, first. But let's talk to, you know, issues around a child earning their money now. Uh, are there ways you can, you know, age appropriate ways that kids can learn to um, earn money? And how can we incorporate the concept of, you know, kids earning little, little monies here and there from an early age? Okay, I think that would be a little difficult for most. I think it's a little difficult for most Nigerian parents because they want you to look dirty, don't do dirty job. Because now we can leverage on social media and technology. We have so many young children, we have so many teenagers because they're making money online. So we can leverage on social media. Because they had the experience or they had the leverage. So now I heard of a child that's in the US. He's not really a child, he's a teenager, and he's a waiter. How many parents in Nigeria can stand the facts or can stand their children being waiters? We're like, no, my child cannot do that. Do you know who I am? People respect me so much. What, what, what would they say when they see my child serving other people? Mm. So it comes down to the mindset the parents have on making money. There's some parents that are even threatened when the child is making money. Like in Nigeria nowadays, there are so many people making so much money online. So many young people making so much money online. You can attest to that. And these parents are like, where did you get the money from? Oh. You are doing rituals. Oh, you are doing Yahoo. Because they don't believe that children can be skilled. They can learn skills. And now social media is there. Technology is there. I remember how I made my first 300,000 naira online. I thought of the skill to monetize. And these are skills that anybody, a five-year-old can learn. I think I was in Sheraton. Was it Sheraton or Transcorp a few years ago? No, Silverbed. And I saw a five-year-old playing the violin so skillfully, like very skillfully. So children can learn these things and they can be taught how to monetize these skills. Like washing cars, you give them a dollar, 1,000 naira, 5,000 naira. That goes a long way. It shows the child that, oh, if I do this thing, I am entitled to, to a salary or to, to wages or something. So when they grow up like that, they believe, they become independent on their own. When they learn how to earn money, they go for, for little errands, you give them money, they do that, they wash cars, you know, those are small, small things we can do. But now the mindset, is the mindset there? Is the mindset there? I've seen parents that just push their children, go do this, and they watch from afar. Some parents are so, let's say they are so um, protective of their children. No, he's too small to start making money. No, I can take care of him. Do you mean I don't end up not to take care of my child? So it starts from the mindset. Are you willing to push your child out there to learn how to make little, little money? And it's easier now. 
Social media is there. We have Udemy. You can learn courses or she can learn courses. We have Udemy. We have Alison. They can get certified. They can build their skills. And trust me, when they learn how to monetize these things, they can start making money from it for themselves. So I think those are little steps we can take. But it starts from the mindset. Do you have the mindset that children can make? Well said there. It starts from a mindset uh, shift. But let's now talk to, you know, uh, setting financial goals. Even as adults, some, some adults still struggle with setting financial goals, meeting these goals, and, you know, money generally. But bringing it to, the, uh, to kids uh, specifically, how can, you know, parents help their children set financial goals and track the progress of their children? while setting these goals, ensuring that their, their, their progress is in line with the, 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 the end goal which the children have for themselves. Okay, um, that's a good one. You know, setting financial goals can be very difficult. And one of the reasons why it becomes difficult, even for adults, is the lack of accountability. You're not accountable to anyone, so you can end up saving up for a very long time and... You know, you just spend it or just blow it up once. Why? There's no accountability. So now, to be able to help children set financial goals, you know, and monitor their progress, like I said earlier, you can help them set accounts. You can help them set accounts, or you can get more than one piggy bank. What are the things this child wants to achieve? Okay, this particular box, this particular jar is for new clothes. This one is for the toys you like. This one is for something else, for anything. Okay, this is for lunch. This is for pizza. When once it is well arranged, you can now tell this child, okay, you have ten dollars this month. How are you going to allocate these things? You want to achieve five things. You can now decide to add two dollars each to the jar or to, to the piggy bank, and make sure the child knows that you're monitoring it and keep asking, how far are you going with your savings? How far are you going with your goals? And they need to understand why they are seeing. I keep saying that they need to know why. Why curiosity is in children. Why are they doing this? So you tell them, because now we we'll build this dependency on children that they believe that if I can't do this, my parents are going to handle it. So for it to be effective, one of the one of the um, the advice I will give is to make the child understand that whenever or at the point where this child gets to at saving, for example, the child wants to get a toy, maybe a PS station or something that costs $100, and this child is able to save up so $50, you can assist by balancing up the rest. It's going to encourage this child. So I think that is going to help build the progress. Ah, I want to get a tangible amount of money. That is going to help me fix the rest. But once this child knows that, ah, my dad is going to take care of everything. This one I'm doing, I'm just doing it because build that thing with the children that, yes, I'm here to help, but I want to let you know that you have something to contribute. You should contribute something. You should contribute something. So to help them track, you know, track where their money is going. Because they know at the end, dad is going to ask me, mom is going to ask me how much I've saved because they know how much was given to me. They know how much I should save. And you should make them very open to talk about money. You should bring them in while talking about family finances. It also help them because children want to feel important. It's like, wow, I'm part of the family. I'm part of the decisions being made in the family. So it will help build them. And let's talk to, you know, schools incorporating, you know, financial education or financial teachings in their curriculum. Uh, what ways can, you know, schools do that, especially integrating financial education into their programs? What are the easiest ways that schools can start by doing so? Okay, um, so I run a nonprofit called Flat Africa. Flat Africa means financial literacy awareness for teachers in Africa. And what we do is that we're training teachers to become financial leaders that would drive positive and sustainable change in the lives of children. So they are, they are um, trained and empowered from a tender age. Some people will be like, Jennifer, why are you training teachers? Why not the children? And I'm like, you can't train the children when there's nobody to back them up, when there's nobody to follow them up. So the best way is for schools to empower their teachers first. Most of the things we learned were taught by our teachers. How to pronounce words, how not to... There are some children that will tell you, no, mommy, you are wrong. My teacher said, this is how it is. That's how powerful the influence of teachers can be in the life of a child. So I think the first and the important, the major step schools should take, or even the government, is to train the teachers so they can train the children at different levels. 
Just like when I was in primary school, there was no civic education. So the same way they brought in civic education is the same way they can bring in financial literacy into the curriculum. Because trust me, bringing in financial literacy is going to help solve so many economic problems. Because once children get that foundation, they pick it up and they run with it into adulthood. And it can contribute to the economic growth of the nation. So it starts from the teachers because they can't give what they don't have. Mm -hmm. Teachers can't give what they don't have. And once these teachers are financially intelligent, it will be easier because that's the foundation, that's the bedrock, that's the grassroots. They cannot transfer it just like they transfer it. Um, the, the knowledge in uh, in nursery one, pupils should know. The knowledge in nursery two, pupils, primary one, secondary school, and like that. So we can break it down to the level of these children. But first, the teachers, they need to be empowered financially. They need to get financial literacy to be able to transfer the knowledge and make it easier for it to spread. So it's going to cause a ripple effect. It's going to cause a ripple effect because the primary one teacher is teaching, the secondary school teacher is teaching, even in tertiary, um, tertiary institutions, down to our coppers. They can learn how to manage even the allowance they get. Because there are some coppers that are not getting money once they leave service. That's the end. They start struggling. But once they can manage that, which started from the foundation, it will be easy for them to navigate their way. So I think it starts with the teachers. But in your interaction with uh, teachers, like you said, you train teachers. Do you, what has been the, your observation now in terms of the financial literacy knowledge of teachers in Nigeria? Okay, I was very surprised, you know, to realize that teachers have little or no knowledge of financial literacy. I was thinking maybe it's from the government schools. You know, we, we do public schools and we do private schools. I'm like, okay, I think this is for the public school teachers. But it's everywhere. It is everywhere. Most teachers don't have this knowledge. And there are schools you go to, they'll be like, oh, Jennifer, thank you so much. If I had known this thing 10 years ago, my life would have been better. A teacher told me, like, he was like, I am pained because I thought that as a teacher, I can't buy a car. I can't live in a good house. No, I can't live the good life. But from what you guys have done today, training us on, you know, basic financial literacy concepts, how to invest, you know, insurance and all that, we can now have, like, you know, a map or a guideline on how we can better ourselves. Because most teachers are struggling. You know, they'll tell you teachers are not being paid, you know, according to what they do. They're not being paid their worth. But now, it doesn't matter what you are doing. It doesn't matter your profession. You can be a teacher and be financially stable. You can be financially free as a teacher. It depends on the knowledge you have about money. So I think... We seem to have uh, lost our guest uh, right there, having some technical difficulties. But she has you know, spoken extensively on how parents can teach children you know, the fundamental concept of uh, saving, budgeting, investing, using your piggy uh, banks and using them rightly, and how you know, teachers can be empowered to empower children, especially as uh, children are you know, very... Uh, very connected with their teachers and will take you know the advice of their teachers sometimes even over uh, their parents yeah she also did talk about you know how you can recommend this learning not just now to your own children but children around you like you say uh, you teach a woman specifically you teach a nation so it's also important that women are well educated when it comes to uh, financial literacy but that is the much that we can take on today's edition of the program. Uh, join the conversation on social media and let us hear your thoughts. What are your thoughts on children learning about money? And in what ways have you as a parent been able to inculcate the habit of, you know, planning around money, uh, especially in the lives of your children. So let us know and uh, share with us on social uh, media. My name is Chiamaka Nendu. Thank you for watching and bye for now.